President Obama face to face with some of his most vocal critics, House Republicans, an extraordinary event as the President of the United States takes on all comers. And in the wake of that, we're going right now to Baltimore, the Renaissance Hotel, where Eric Cantor uh, is Cantor rather is speaking. Let's take a listen to what he says in the wake of the President addressing House Republicans. And begin to open their doors and invite Republicans to participate in a discussion like we just had. Obviously, we heard differences, and there are differences. But as the leader just said, there are some things we agree upon. Offshore drilling seems to be one that came up several times in there, as well as the construction of clean nuclear plants. Let's go ahead and do those things. Let's do the things that we can agree upon, set aside perhaps the things that the president believes in that we philosophically don't, but if there is some common ground, we ought to go ahead forward with those. So I look forward to perhaps seeing that uh, the House leadership on the other side of the aisle follows the lead of the president, and we can begin to see actually some progress towards making uh, things happen for the American people. Well, let me say, House Republican leaders are grateful uh, for the President of the United States' willingness to come uh, in a freewheeling and open environment uh, and have a frank uh, and honest conversation about the future of this country. Uh, it was also um, very welcome uh, to hear the President finally acknowledge that House Republicans have offered positive alternatives over the past year of his administration to every major legislative initiative considered in the Congress. Uh, this summary that is now available at GOP.gov for all Americans to review uh, links back uh, to um, alternatives that Republicans offered on economic stimulus, uh, on a budget, uh, on uh, energy independence, uh, and on health care reform that will lower costs without raising uh, or growing the size uh, of government. Uh, we welcome uh, the dialogue uh, with the President, uh, and uh, we especially welcome uh, the acknowledgement that this business about the party of no ideas uh, can hopefully uh, be banished once and for all from the political debate. Question. Um, do you, now, now that you've heard from the president, do you feel like um, you're, he'll be more receptive, do, that you will be more of a participant in the process now going forward? Well, I think the, the president's always been uh, uh, willing to work a little more closely with us, but really it's never translated uh, into real action on the Hill. And so, uh, as uh, Mr. Cantor pointed out, it's really up to, to Speaker Pelosi and, and Majority Leader Hoyer uh, to to carry through, I think uh, I think the president will carry through, in terms of having uh, more meetings with us, having more discussions with us, uh, but uh, there's got to be more than just discussions. Leader Banner, uh, some of your members have, have said that they felt like the president came here and said that you need to uh, act in more, more bipartisan fashion to get beyond all this rhetoric, and then turned around and started accusing you, the Republicans, of doing just that and doing some of that himself. What do you think of that? Well, it was a candid conversation, and uh, as you're well aware, we've been through uh, we've been through a pretty difficult year uh, with a lot of major issues and. Uh, uh, and I, I'm not going to exacerbate <laughs> the problem that's already out there. I think today was a good first step uh, in in having a, more of a dialogue, and I hope it continues. Mr. Leader, Obama did keep talking though about how Republicans need to stop talking so badly about the Democratic Party and, and stop these attacks all the time. But wouldn't you say that Democrats do exactly the same thing to you? Did you think that was fair? Uh, Listen, when I uh, have issue uh, with some of their proposals, uh, I, I, yeah, listen, I try to be honest about it. Uh, and when, when I describe their health care bill as a government takeover of our health care system, uh, I say it because I truly believe that's the essence of their bill. And we can go down through all of it. And so uh, I'm going to do uh, what I think I have to do. And I think our leadership team, uh, we're going to try to be honest in our assessment of those policies uh, that we disagree with. But every time we do disagree with their policy, <coughs> you'll continue to see us put forward what we think is a better solution. I think that's an honest way 
uh, for the minority in which to operate. Yeah. But, uh, House have, um, All right, there you're listening to the uh, House Minority Leader John Boehner. He was preceded by uh, the Republican Conference Chairman there, Mike Pence, and before that, the Minority Whip Eric Cantor. Let's go right now to NBC's Luke Russert, who's in Baltimore there uh, at the Renaissance outside that building where this Republican Leadership Conference is being held. So, Luke, let's talk about what you're just hearing in this uh, give and take with the GOP members' reaction to the president speaking. Are you yeah. getting a, a sense of a tone? that they want to work with him and they're going to make their best effort to do so, which really is the bottom line here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, President Obama said uh, in his message to them today that he would like to do this monthly, uh, meet with the House GOP. They seem willing to do it. And uh, you're talking, with, I think the politics right there is really interesting is how the GOP is saying, okay, Obama's willing to listen to us, but now it's Speaker Pelosi and Steny Hoyer. They have to do it too to bring us in the room. On the bigger picture, though, which I found extremely interesting today, was a decision to allow the cameras present for the Q&A. Last night, the White House called the GOP leadership and requested this. I, I, it, it's obviously turned out to be a brilliant political move. Tom Cole, former head of the NRCC, congressman from Oklahoma, said, quote, he scored many points. He did really well. Barack Obama, for an hour and a half, was able to refute every single Republican talking point used against him on the major issues of the day. Uh, it, it, in essence, it was almost like a debate where he was front and center for the majority of it. Uh, it, it it's very, very interesting to see what this will do to the political dialogue for the rest of next week. Um, final point on that. I do believe one Republican said to me off the record and saying behind closed doors, it was a mistake that we allowed the cameras to roll like that. Uh, we should not have done that. Very what? interesting. Why? Why? Because they didn't fire away the way they really wanted to for fear of repercussions, you know, a la Joe Wilson, you lie well, if there was if that some look, disrespect shown. Right. Well, it, you, when the Democrats did this, they had a closed camera session, right? When he had a meeting with the Democrats right. last month. Mm -hmm. By allowing these cameras to roll, it allowed Obama to be up there for an hour and a half refuting every single Republican talking point, which he really has not had an opportunity to do in his campaign rally speeches that he's been doing in Florida yesterday, that he's been uh, in doing addresses to the White House. He was able to directly refute Republicans to their face for an hour and a half on TV. Mm -hmm. I think he scores a lot of political points. Okay. Luke Russert, Baltimore. Thanks, Luke.